Praise the Lord. God bless you. I'm Apostle Jimmy K. Rogers, Good Hope Ministries, reminding you there's still hope. We would like to thank our faithful partners who allow us in your homes each and every week. If you have any questions, you can call us at 1-800-331-3552 or email us at ask at tct.tv and post your questions in the comment section on YouTube and Facebook. I'd like to introduce our panel of pastors at this time. Pastor Lee Marie Vargas, Iglesia Casa de Adoración, Pastor Stephen Owens, Mount Calvary Baptist Church, Pastor Julia Farrell, Breakout Ministries, Pastor Charles E. Redmond Jr., New Journey Church, Pastor Tim Neal. Celebration Word of Life Ministries. <laughs> At this time, we're going to ask our first question. Uh, Pastor Vargas, the question is coming from Paul from Pennsylvania. How do you understand John 3, 13 and its meaning? Awesome. That's a good question. Let's go to what it says. It says, John 3, 13. I'm going to be reading the English Standard Version. It says, no one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And that's really good to know, especially after this weekend, that Jesus is the one that knows who he is. I, will, I, I love this because it's also about identity. And if you see here in the scripture, it talks about our new creation, about new living. Um, so I just want to make sure that it's important to know that he, Jesus, do not say that he ascended into heaven like Elijah or Enoch. He always is aware of his origin, where he was from, yes. that he holds all the knowledge. He knows what's going on. He knows what happened before. And John, especially John, um, talks about this when you read the first chapter, is that he was the verb, the verb is with us. He was with us. So it's, it, I like the way um, of John when, the, when, when he say it like that, but also the Jesus was telling them, listen, I know who I am. I know what happened before me. I know what's going to happen after. And that knowledge only belongs to him. I love it. Thank you. All right, Pastor Owens, what is your take on it? Yeah, such a, such a great question. Uh, and it's such an interesting verse as well. I think the, the part of the verse that uh, can trip many people up is the last portion of the verse where it says, uh, that is the son of man who is in heaven. All right, so what does that mean? What does that look like? Uh, I believe it's important for us to realize that we do not understand everything there is about God. All right. And Jesus says how he and the father are one. Right. So when you look at that in John 10, like, what does that mean? There's parts about God that we do not understand, yet we still trust and have faith in him. And I think also to realize that these the same type of verbiage is spoken about those who believe in Jesus. Uh, so when we look at Ephesians chapter number two, Verse six, listen to what it says. It says, and raised up together and made us to sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That right now, Christians are seated in heaven positionally. Yes, we're walking around the earth. We're alive, but positionally because we live and believe in Christ. We too are positioned in him who is in heaven. Very good. Pastor Julia. So I love this text because what it's talking about is kingdom things. Mm. And if you look at, it's a conversation they're asking Jesus questions about kingdom things. If you look at the text before, the scripture before verse 12, it says, if I have told you earthly things and you do not believe me, how will you believe me if I tell you heavenly things? All right. And so it's a text about um, uh, kingdom principles. Uh, if you look at the, the verse 13 and you know, T, it says no one has ever gone to heaven and returned, but the son of man has come down from heaven. So he was talking about Jesus. He was talking about he's the one that was in heaven, came down and returned. So that's basically what that text is referring to. Pastor Redman, your take on things. Um, excellent question, excellent answer so far. Um, and just to contribute my spin on it, I, I, if you will, because I'm not going to say anything different than what was already said, but I would just add basically that he's talking about understanding the kingdom of God. If you look at the whole text, uh, 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 John chapter 3, 
is Nicodemus, the, 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 the Pharisee, the man of God, the person who is a spiritual leader who should understand these things come to Jesus at nighttime, you know, because he didn't want to be, uh, you know, <laughs> sought by his colleagues, if you will. And, but he really believed that he had an intrigue in, uh, um, about who Jesus was. And so if you look at what he was saying, like even verse 10, he said, you're a spiritual leader <laughs> and you don't even know these things. <laughs> and so I like verse six and verse eight. I'm gonna read it really quick. Then I'll pass it on. Flesh, uh, uh, that was of the flesh is, uh, is flesh and that which is of the spirit is spirit. The wind blows wherever it pleases. Yes, sir. You hear sound, but you cannot tell where it's coming from or where it's going. So it is with everyone in the spirit. And so he was explaining to him that you have knowledge, you have understanding, but you, but you lack what it takes, which is the spirit of God to reveal it to you. And it's not enough to have knowledge. Knowledge is not equi equivalent to righteousness. You need to not just have the knowledge of the Bible, but you need to understand what the Bible is revealing to us, the God that the Bible is revealing to us. Amen. Pastor Tim Neal, Word of Life Ministry, Amen. share with us today. <clears throat> Amen. I agree. I agree with what's been said so far. We know that Enoch and, and Elijah had ascended into heaven. Yes, but as uh, Sister Pharaoh had said that um, no man has come back. Mm. And Jesus was in heaven and he came to earth. That's it. And that's basically the, that sums up that passage Amen. of scripture. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, pastors. We have another question. Mary from Iowa asks, Pastor Owens, is it okay for a pastor to change the name of a Baptist church to a non-denominational church? Is it okay? Well, that's some sticky water right there. <laughs> um, so, um, <laughs> First of all, yes. um, each church is different. Very right? good. And each church has a different um, uh, order and structure and even hierarchy of how things are done. Uh, I believe it's important for uh, the church to agree mm -hmm. on the name um, that they're going to be having it and that represents them as a community of believers, um, but also understanding what does the bylaws say for the mm. church? Right? What does the Constitution say about the church? All right, there are certain liberties that the Constitution will give towards the pastor or the, the elders uh, or even the deacons and trustees. Very so good. you need to look at that kind of stuff. But I would say that, uh, first and foremost, God is not the author of confusion. Right. And it is the pastor's job to lead the congregation towards where God is leading the congregation to be and to do. But doing that in a way that brings unity and glory to God, not division and confusion to the body of Christ. Very good. Pastor Farrell. Um, so I really like this question, Mary, because uh, when we're talking about changing the name of the church, a couple of things that first came to my mind uh, was Romans uh, 117, where it talks about going um, from faith to faith. Um, I thought about how we are increasing in learning and how we um, we growing in God, how we uh, sometimes coming into a knowledge of him and things are revealed and we grow in the things of God. That came to me first. Proverbs 1 15 or well, 1 and 5 says, let the wise hear and increase in learning. So sometimes things are revealed and the things that we uh, once knew a greater revelation is opened up to us. I also thought about Matthew 16 and 18 and Perfect. then I'm done where he says, um, and I say unto you, you are Peter. He called him by what name? Right. And he says, upon this rock, I will build my church. And so I just wanted to say that because the name of a church is very important. Oftentimes you wonder, a, a friend of mine pointed it out, is the church really living up to the name um, that, it, <laughs> that is on the outside? Of, and that's a whole nother conversation, but it's on the outside of the door. And so sometimes maybe that pastor got convinced Convicted when he asked himself that question, am I really living up to the name of what's on the outside of my church? And God has convicted him. You know, I believe, you know, Jesus naming Peter um, the rock uh, and then saying my church is built on some stability. And I, I just believe it's important, um, the name. Pastor Reverend. Amen. That's a great, great, great way to look at it. I think is important. And like... <laughs> Pastor Owen said, it's sticky water. I, I don't, I don't want to be on this panel to tell you what you should do in your, your specific. I can understand and, and clearly sense the sensitivity that is there and the, even maybe the animosity within the question. But I think it's important that, that both sides be heard 
that 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 again you, you abide by the bylaws and maybe if there's a way to change them i don't know i can't speak to those things but i can tell you this that as pastor Owen said the pastor should lead in unity as, as much as possible and that both sides should be heard it's just not one side or the other both sides should be heard and considered but i also like what matthew 5 um 28 um 25, I'm sorry. Matthew 5, 25. It says, Settles matter, settle matters quickly with your adversary before it gets to the court. <laughs> so we don't want to take to the court from there. We should be able, even with um, in 1 Corinthians 6, he said, we're going to be able to judge angels. We're going to be able to judge the world. So why are we, why can't we settle our disputes between one another? So I would say that this matter should be settled quickly and peacefully and in unity really fast. Very good. Pastor Tim. Hey, man, you know, I'll be honest with you. This is a, a question that probably none of us on this panel are qualified to answer because mm. we're not a member of this church. Mm. Uh, but, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sure um, uh, if it was done properly, they would have brought that before the board. And if there's no board, they would have brought it before the congregation. Uh, it should have been voted upon. And if they had the majority say, let's change the name, then the rest of the people should just accept that as that's what the majority wants. Uh, unfortunately, I find that a lot of times in a church structure, I've been a part of a church structure for 45 years, I find that you might have 90% of the people say yay, but you got 10% of the people that say nay, and they're the ones that's going to cause the most of the problems. So, so you know, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know anything about this situation, but um, I just say accept it, and if you can't accept it, then there's plenty of churches you can find. Very good. There are a lot of Baptist churches out there that they could go to. Is that right? Yeah, so-called Baptist. The Lord also said that we are, he's not coming back for a denomination anyway. He's coming back for a church. And so you can stay in that church or you can go to another ministry. But as long as your soul is being saved in that ministry, as long as your soul is being fed in that ministry, you don't have to leave because of a name. Uh, we only trust in one name anyway, so that's all that matters about that. We have a question coming in from YouTube. Pastor Farrell, this question will be directed to you. It's an anonymous viewer who asks us to explain Colossians 3, 1 through 4. So I'm asking that the pastors would turn to Colossians 3, verses 1 through 4. I love that song that says, there is a name. Hallelujah, that we love to hear. Hallelujah. A name that sounds like music to our ear, the name of Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. As the pastors are turning, do you love the Lord today? Do you love him with all your heart, your mind, and your soul? Think about the name of Jesus. Amen. Pastor Farrell. All right, so Colossians 3, yes. uh, 1 through 4. I'll read it um, in the King James. It says, if Ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ Hallelujah. sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ that's, that's in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, oh, yes. then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Um, so basically, um, uh, what first came to mind was... Um, the scripture in Romans that talks about the renewing of our minds, mm -hmm. um, that talks about being transformed by the renewing of our minds. Uh, and, and when we talk about being risen with Christ, um, it's talking about to those believers. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so when we're talking about being risen, it's talking to believers who um, the Bible talks about if you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, um, then you're saved. Um, th that's talking about believers. Um, so we're talking about risen with Christ. Um, we're talking about seeking those things that are above, those things that are um, in, in, in heavenly places, raising our minds, thinking of things that are kingdom, where Christ sitting on the right hand of the Father and then is setting in our things on things, things that are um, kingdom principle things um, in the word of God, um, not just on things on these earth. That, thinking of Jesus things gives you a different perspective, a different walk, a different light. Um, and I can go on and on. I'll give other pastors a chance to give you all of the scriptures behind that. When you talk about being dead, that's what the baptism, you're 
you're, you're born again. You're dead to things of this world. You walk away from your old life and risen in new life with Christ. And so that's just a synopsis just to get, and I'll let them give you all of the scriptures behind that because there's so much to say about it. Amen. Pastor Redman, I know that you're getting ready to answer, but we have a break and we want you to get ready for more after these few messages. God bless you. Ask the pastor. Did you know you can enjoy total Christian television, whether at home or on the go? That's right, all with one simple click. Watch TCT's exclusive live stream and on-demand programming. Cast to your smart TV. Share episodes with your friends. Never miss a moment of your favorite programs with pause and rewind. Just for signing up and downloading the TCT app, we'll send you a great gift absolutely free. Selection will vary and supplies are limited, so don't wait another minute. Go to tct.tv, ways to watch, apps and devices to get started. Download the TCT app to get access to Total Christian Television. Do it today. You ask the questions, and we provide the answers. On Ask the Pastor, we minister the Word of God as we receive your inquiries. It takes a great deal of time, effort, and finances to produce this quality Christian programming. When you support TCT, we can continue to provide biblical Christian guidance to our viewers. We can talk about Jesus all we want. Put that question in, and we'll read it for you right here live on the air. Oh, my goodness, my tablet is on fire. The next time you have a question and you want to know what the Bible says about about it as the pastor. Your support can make a difference in the lives of many. Go to our website at tct.tv or call us at 1-800-232-9855. You can text to give by sending TCT to 56512 or you can mail a contribution to P.O. Box 1010, Marion, Illinois, 62959. Thank you for partnering with TCT and Ask the Pastor. Praise the Lord, and welcome back to Ask the Pastor. I'm Jimmy Rogers, Apostle Jimmy Rogers, Good Hope Ministry, just letting you know there's still hope. If you have any questions, we ask that you call 1-800-232-9855. Mail us at P.O. Box 1010 Marion, Illinois, 62959-TCT.TV to give online and text to give at TCT to 56512. If you have any questions, you can call one 800 331-3552. Email us at ask at tct.tv and post those questions in the comment section on YouTube and Facebook. Okay, Pastor Redmond, here we are. Can you please explain for our anonymous viewer on YouTube, uh, Colossians 3, 1 through 4? Amen. That's a good question. Yes, it is. Since you've been raised with Christ. Since we're, Hallelujah. Uh, what a, uh, a time to ask it. After Resurrection yes, Sunday. Amen. Yes, yes, <laughs> We've been raised with Christ, which means Hallelujah. we have the power. Amen. That's the same power that raised up Jesus from the dead now lives on the inside of us. And so when you are in the world, when you are just just uh, living how you how, how however you want to live, if you will, you, you are obsessed with certain things like getting money or, you know, whatever it may be. Sure. It, it's a whole different, a whole lot of different things that we focus on when we are in the world. But here he's telling us when we have given our life to Christ, we are dead, which means that what we used to do, the way we used to think, the way we used to operate was no longer active. Yes, and we've been raised to the newness of life, which means, that, like Pastor Ferrell said, we need to have our minds on kingdom business. Mm -hmm and not so much caught up on what we used to be caught up on or what the rest of the world is caught up on, prioritizing God versus money, prioritizing God versus success yes, versus sir. status, those types of things. So it's really important. What came to my mind when, when I read this, set your mind and your affections on things above, yeah, is uh, uh, Matthew 6, 19 and 20. It says, don't store for yourself treasures on earth where moths and uh, uh, thieves destroy. And, break, and thieves break in to steal. But store up yourself treasures in heaven where moths and vermin and, and, and thieves cannot destroy. And thieves cannot break in you, and steal. If we set our affections on things above, if we put our treasure in yes. God yes, instead sir. of things of this world, we'll never be disappointed. 
I love that. I love that. Pastor Tim Neal, what is your take on it? Amen. You know, there's an old song that I quote all the time. It's, I'm on my way to heaven, and the journey gets sweeter every day. All right, sir. You know, and that doesn't mean that we don't have trials. It doesn't mean that we don't have difficulties. But as the scripture says, that we, we, we set our affections on things above. We die out to this world. Paul, as Sister Farrell was, she was quoting different scriptures. Paul said, I die daily. Uh, he said, I crucify my flesh. Because, see, my flesh still lives here on earth, yes, and my yes, flesh sir. still desires earthly things. But my spirit man, if I'm risen with Christ, my spirit man will desire heavenly things. Amen. And so when my flesh, the Bible speaks about my flesh and my spirit being enmity, yes. where we, if we fight against each other. And, and when we feed our spirit man, then we'll be able to subdue the flesh. But if we feed the fleshly man, then the flesh will overcome come the spirit and will be a conquered person or a carnal Christian. Paul wrote to the church of Corinthians, to the Corinthians and said that they were carnal. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they did things earthly. Mm -hmm. uh, the things that they, um, that they desired were not heavenly things. So that's what this passage of scripture is saying to crucify the flesh. You're dead to that old yes, man yes, and look and seek after godly things. I love that pastor Neil. And I want you to teach me that song. I love Love those church songs, so I want to hear what that what that sounds like, Pastor Lamarie. Um, yes, I'm just gonna finish because just in case you tune up just right now while we were talking about, <laughs> but I'm gonna read from the New Living Translation because sometimes, um, like to this brand new generation that is raising up, sometimes they need a little bit of a little more understanding too. That's good. But it says, since you have been raised to new life with Christ, we have to remember that this new life is not just you, it's with Christ, within Christ. And it says, where Christ sits in the place of honor, no, set your sight on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you die to this life and your real life yes, is yes. hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. So this is what we're telling you. You have a brand new life in Christ. Keep that, um, just step into that and keep reading the whole chapter because it talks about how we're going to live this brand new life in Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Pastor LaMarie. Uh, we'd ask Pastor Owens the same question. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, such a great question. Uh, it's a lot of verses to cover, um, but I think uh, the panel has done a well job in articulating the, the fact that uh, when you give your life to Jesus and you believe in his death, burial, and resurrection, uh, you are dead to that old man you used to be, and now you are a new creation. You are new in Christ. Uh, and with that, there is now a way that we are to live uh, as we seek to glorify him and we live out this Christian life. I think it's important that the, we realize, too, that the Apostle Paul mentions that we are to set our mind on these things, yes, right? Yes. So as your mind goes, so does your body. As your mind goes, so does your actions, your behavior, your conversation, uh, how you treat people, mm -hmm. right? So we are to change the way we think, having our minds renewed on the word of God so that we can live a life that glorifies Jesus and declares who he is in us. Amen. These questions have been outstanding, but the answers have also been phenomenal. Thank you, pastors. We have another question coming in from YouTube. Uh, uh, an anonymous viewer asked Pastor Redman, how can you describe the origin of God? How can you uh, describe the origin of God, Pastor Redman? This is a good one. I can't wait to hear this one. Wow, that's, that is a good <laughs> one. How do you describe somebody who has no beginning? Ah, this, you don't describe what, what he, God cannot be described. He has to be believed. Yes, sir. It's important that you believe. It's through faith. He who comes to God, that's what he says in Rome, uh, Hebrews uh, chapter 11, verse 6. He who comes to God must first believe. We cannot rationalize in our mind. We can't understand it. We can't explain it. We can't articulate it. We just believe it. We believe it in our heart. Ex everything that the Bible says is true. And when, once you believe it, you won't, be, you won't have time to explain it because it's just what's uh, understood or need to be explained. From uh, so, Pastor from Tim me. Owens, the mysteries of the Bible. Amen. This question comes from YouTube. An anonymous viewer asks, how can you describe the origin of God? 
You know, I was just thinking when you first asked that question, that's easy. You can't. <laughs> you can't explain the origins of God because he is, as, as it's already been stated, he always has been. Uh, you know, the word of God says uh, from the beginning, when it speaks of the, from the beginning, it's speaking about from the beginning of man, yes, sir, not the beginning of God, because right. there is no beginning and there is no end. Amen. Pastor Lemarie? Um, while I was thinking about that, um, yes, um, we, that's the simple answer is that we, we can, it's just something that we need to have faith. But if we study the names of God, which the Bible, um, teaches us, we can understand like not truly like, like let's not say not exactly the beginning and the end. He is just infinite, but we can get to know him even more better. So let's go through the scriptures to get to know him through his names so we can truly know who he is. Well, I don't, I'm, I'm not into when he started. All I know is that he is the I am. <laughs> he is the now. Yes, so man. get to know him through the scriptures, yeah. throughout his names. Ah, uh, my God. I love that. We got to know who he is. My God. All right. Pastor Owens, you give us your take on it because I'm getting ready yeah. to shout. We yeah. got insurance <laughs> on this ground here. Amen. <laughs> yeah, it's such a good question. I think it's a question that uh, many people ask when they're beginning to think about who God my, is my, and my, how... My to live out this life and um, what does it look like to follow uh, a God who has always been there? Yes, sir. Right. And if, uh, and, and it's a child that even children have, right? So if we've been created, then who created God? Uh -huh. Right. Um, but the thing is going back to uh, what pastor said over here is that it's important. Look at the names of God. One of the names in the Bible for God is Lord. Yeah. Right. And it is the self existing one <laughs> and that he doesn't need anyone to create himself he, he's always been there. He sustains himself. Um, there is no beginning to God. God begins things. He never had a beginning. Uh, so when we look to see who God is, it's important to realize um, that he is a God who always has been, will be, and will forever be God. I love it. Pastors, y'all getting ready. I mean, we just got off of Resurrection Sunday, so we, y'all hitting on some, if we had a B3 right here, we would... <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Pharrell, come on, give us your take on it. Now, can you state the question one more time for me? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. The anonymous viewer from YouTube asks, how can you describe the origin of God? Uh, three scriptures came to my mind. Uh, Hebrews 1 and 1. And it just simply says, God, who at sundry times and in divers manners. It just starts with God. Uh, it, the second scripture that came to me was John uh, 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Then we know Genesis, right? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And so when we talk about the origin of God, it's just God. And so <laughs> he is the origin, God starts with God. <laughs> and so, uh, and so I think that's, that's what we need to know. I, I love everything everybody said, but when, when we talk about the origin, that's the beauty of who he is. It starts with him. The scripture says, I am alpha and omega. I start it and I stop it. I start it and I end it. That's the beauty of who he is. <laughs> it, it, that's the beauty of it. God is God. He started and he stopped it. I love it. I love it. Our next question comes from an anonymous viewer on Facebook. Pastor Tim Neal, this question is directed to you. If Sodom and Gomorrah didn't have even 10 good people, who cries did the Lord hear in Genesis 1913? Well, let's look at Genesis 1913. All right, pastors, if we could turn to Genesis 1913. Uh, anonymous viewer from Facebook asks the question, if Sodom and Gomorrah didn't have even 10 good people, whose cries did the Lord hear in that verse? Genesis 10, 19. Gen Genesis 19, I'm sorry, 13. and 13. There we go. It says, for we will destroy this place because of the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the Lord has sent us to destroy it. Well, if we know a little bit of history about this, uh, this, these five cities, it's not just Sodom and Gomorrah, but there was an additional three smaller mm -hmm. cities as well. They had set up laws 
that uh, the homosexuality was so rampant that they set up laws and they would they would put beds alongside buildings. And if they chose that, if man come walking through there, if they chose to rape that man, they could rape him right. and legally get by with it. Mm -hmm. If you recall when the angels went into Lot's house, they demanded that the, the, the angels be turned out. And, <clears throat> excuse me, Lot said, I have two virgin daughters I'll send to you. They said, no, we want the men. Jesus. That that spirit of homosexuality was so, so violent and so corrupt in that city that they would take men and they would abuse them. And, and I'm guessing at this, I don't have no scripture to back this up, but I'm guessing that the ones that they cried out, God probably heard the cries of these people. Even though they may not have been a righteous people, mm. God still heard their cries. And we know that he hears the cries of the righteous. But I also know that he'll hear the cries of the wicked if we're crying out to him. All right. Amen. And so I, I, I suspect that that's probably who he heard crying. But the, the wickedness and the violence and the, the vileness of that city had come up before the nostrils of God sure. and it became a stench in the nostrils of God. And God determined that he would have to destroy this city. Um, and, and the reason Abraham stopped at 10, because he had uh, Lot, Lot's wife, Lot's two unmarried daughters, yeah. Lot's three married daughters and three son-in-law. So he figures there has to be at has least to 10. Be. Has to be. But there was six of that family Jesus. that were not righteous, and therefore that city was just, those cities were destroyed. Wow. Thank you, Pastor. That's a lot of great information. Pastor Vargas, the question is coming from Facebook. An anonymous viewer asks, if Solomon Gomorrah didn't even have 10 good people, whose cries did the Lord hear in Genesis 19, 13? Yes, and, and I was thinking about that because I was thinking about Abraham. He was crying for that city, even though he knew there was wicked people mm. there, but there was also a person that he knew. There was love. That was family there. And and I, what I see here is... God, God, God is a just God. Mm -hmm. Hey, I know he killed so many people, but also he's a just God. But here he was crying to Abraham. He was, Abraham was his friend. So he was like, okay, let me, let me get into terms with you. Okay. But the cry here, the, the important cry here was Abraham, like it went when it was Moses, the cry of Moses saved so many people. Mm -hmm. But in this case, it was um, Abraham's family was there too. So you're saying an intercessor. Abraham oh, was an intercessor. That was the word I'm looking for. Oh, all right. Praise <laughs> God. I love it. I love it. And it's, it's, it's so powerful to have a leader who is not only a leader for you, but an intercessor between God and man. Sure between being a leader and being an intercessor. Hallelujah. And Moses, Abraham, and so many of these men and women of God, they were more than leader, they were intercessors. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Pastor Vargas. I love it. All right, Pastor Owens, uh, share with us what your thoughts are on this question here. Yeah, absolutely. I am scurrying through the Bible trying to find <laughs> a verse uh, that was on my, my mind when I, thought, when I, when I think about uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay. Um, and I believe I found it. It's in Ezekiel okay, chapter on. 16, yes, sir. Uh, verse 49. It says, look, this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom. Mm. She and her daughters had pride, fullness of food, and abundance of idols, idleness. Wow. Wow. Neither did she strengthen the hands of the poor or the needy. And they were haughty and committed abominations before me. Therefore, I took them away as I saw fit. Mm. And so we see here in the text that it wasn't only the issue of uh, sexual immor immorality That's going good. on in Sodom, but there was also people not doing right by the poor, That's good. not doing right by That's those so who were in need. And so the people who could have been crying out were those who were being oppressed, mm -hmm. those who were being afflicted mm. by the hands of those in power. Mm. So God is a God who sees wow. everything and hears everything. And it's important for us to realize that God is a God who judges and he's a God who loves and brings forth correction. 
I love it, Pastor Owens. Thank you for elaborating on that because so many focus on just one entity or one aspect of it. But you pastors have elaborated so well, exeg exegete the text so well that now we're seeing a different side of it. And that, that's so great for our viewer. Pastor Pharrell, what's your take on it? I just kept going down in the text to verse 19 where it says, indeed, your servant has found favor in your good. sight. Very good. And you have increased in your mercy um, and have shown me by saving, saving my life. So I, I agree with what the pastor said. Have said um, about Abraham and about Lot and how God um, showed them favor and showed them mercy, even on the behalf of them, on the behalf of mm -hmm. the whole city. Yes. And, and it shows how um, sometimes it only takes one person. Um, it only takes you. They might save your whole, you know, to mm -hmm. save you. Mm -hmm. and, and they were saved because of their favor in the sight of God. And so, you know, it, it, that, that's what I, that was my take on I it. I love it. Thank you so much. We'll be right back after a few of these wonderful messages with Ask the Pastor. You know, God is the God that created everything. He created us. I think we must really make sure that we have the intimacy with the Father. We need to widen our understanding. And Jesus is the door to the Father. He's the, the all in all. Everything that's in this word, this, this is our religion. And wisdom operates best in love. I think that you should pray directly for everything. We have received forgiveness from God. You live your life the way God said to live it, and he will support you in that. In other words, you might only be raggedy like a dog, but you're alive, and there's still hope for you. Satan is under the control of God. He can do no more than what God allows him to do. They have God's power at their fingertips, but they choose to be oppressed by the devil. You can be set free. One thing that probably hinders our blessing the most is that we don't ask. If you ask for it, you will receive that gift. I'm not gonna be stranded with this. I'm gonna call in and ask the pastor. Did you know you can enjoy total Christian television, whether at home or on the go? That's right, all with one simple click. Watch TCT's exclusive live stream and on-demand programming. Cast to your smart TV. Share episodes with your friends. Never miss a moment of your favorite programs with pause and rewind. Just for signing up and downloading the TCT app, we'll send you a great gift absolutely free. Selection will vary and supplies are limited, so don't wait another minute. Go to tct.tv, ways to watch, apps and devices to get started. Download the TCT app to get access to Total Christian Television. Do it today. And praise the Lord, Apostle Jimmy K. Rogers, Good Hope Ministries. We'd like to thank you for your support today. You can call us at 1-800-232-9855. Mail us at P.O. Box 1010, Marion, Illinois, 62959. Text to give online at tct.tv and text TCT to 56512. We ask that you have any questions, call 1-800-331-3552. Email us at ask at tct.tv and post those questions in the comment section on YouTube and Facebook. All right, Pastor Redmond, here we are with that last question. If Sodom and Gomorrah didn't even have 10 good people, whose cries did the Lord hear in Genesis 1913? Well, that I, I think has been answered pretty well. Exhausted, huh? Yes, Pastor Neil. <laughs> Pastor Neil, I like the best. He said he'll hear the cries of the wicked I love it. when they cry out to him. Ah. And so make sure that you cry out to God. Don't just complain about your problems. Don't just complain to your girlfriend, your, you know, whoever, about what's <laughs> going on in your life. Cry out to God, and he will hear you. Not your girlfriend, Amen. not just anybody in your life. Cry on the guy. I love it. Okay, Pastor Vargas, our next question is coming from Ollie from Tennessee. If playing blackjack is gambling, then isn't playing the stock market also gambling? Well, wow, that's, that's a really good question. Um, I'm not too familiar with gambling, with Jack Black or the stock market, but <laughs> to tell you the truth, you know, I'm, I'm not familiar with that, but in a certain way, if I think about it, it's, it's kind of like the same there because even though there's no certainly, um, but in the stock market, this, it's, 
it's regulated. Let's say it's more regulated from what I see. And I don't think they're gambling because there's a lot of money going through that, companies and all that. So I wouldn't I wouldn't say the same gambling, but it's it's uh it's way there. Yeah, almost the same. But like I say, I don't I don't I don't dominate this gambling world or stock market, so I'm going to leave this to my followers. You're going to leave it to people who know about it, really, <laughs> the gambling. And <laughs> Come on, Pastor Owen, share with us uh, your, your, your take on it. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I was looking for a verse uh, in Proverbs, but yeah, I think it's important for us to realize anything can be turned into a game of chance. Very good. Very anything good. can be turned into a game of speculation. Very good. Um, the proverbial writer, uh, Proverbs, talks against us going into games of speculation and uh, doing games where we're trying to get rich quick. Mm. That's basically the purpose mm. of you doing casinos, Jack Black, whatever it is. Sure. You're trying to get uh, fast money real fast. So it's important for us to realize as followers of Jesus, the, the goal is not to focus on how much money we can get, but how well are we using the money that we have. Right? Are we being stewards over the things God has given us? Uh, and God will increase as he sees us being faithful over a little. Right? So it's important that we realize that, we, um, that we're supposed to be people of good stewardship and investing well. Uh, and if you try to speculate in the stock market, it's the same thing as speculating in um, a, a game of chance. But I believe it's important that we can realize we can also do wise planning through the stock market. Mm. You cannot do that through blackjack. Very good. Thank you. Pastor Farrell. Um, I absolutely love what he, uh, Pastor just said. And I want to take you to Matthew 25. I'm not going to read the whole verse, um, but 25, 14 through 30. If you read it in the easy read, ERV, I just want to look at verse 16 because it talks about the servant who got five bags went quickly. Uh, we know this to be the parable of the talents. It says uh, the servant who got five bags went quickly to invest the money. Those five bags of money earned five more. The, it was the same with the servant who had two bags. The servant invested the money and earned two more, but the servant who got one bag of money went away and he dug a hole in the ground. Then he hid his master's money in the hole. All right, so I'm not going to go through the whole story. You can read down to verse 30. Um, the one that just dug it and did anything, he was called wicked mm -hmm. in the King James Version that did nothing with his talent. Um, talent, if you look at um, the meaning of talent originally means balance or weight. So I can understand why you would not do anything because the weight or responsibility mm. of carrying mm. a talent is hard to yes. make wise decisions so and you want to sit and do nothing. I understand that. Um, to take time and invest and steward what you have and plan and invest it into something to yield a reward, that takes, that's a weight to make a decision. That's right. And that's what God called us to, is to invest what we have mm -hmm. and use our talents wisely. Thank you, Pastor Redmond. Yeah, that's very good. I think, I think they did a really good job answering this. It, 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 there's a difference between gambling and investing, right? And so I wouldn't say that they're the same thing, but I can understand the, the, the question because they're both risky, if you will. Mm. I like uh, what well, Luke 14, 20, uh, 28 says, read it real quick. It says, suppose once of you, one of you wants to build a tower, won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? So Jesus is explaining how investment will work, if you will. So gambling is, is different than investing. So if you're going to invest, you will look at and get educated and get an understanding of what you're going to invest in and how it all works and what the risks are. Sometimes they're calculated risks with, mm. with investing that you can't get with gambling from there. So, so there, are, there's, there are those things there. But the thing is, the key is, if you're too afraid of the risk, even with investments, I would say that you shouldn't take it, if you will, because you should sit down and look at the risk to make sure that you are, you know, the calculation is worth the risk from there. I love that answer. Very good. If it's worth even investing in. Very, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And I like how Pastor Vargas shared with us that if I don't really know anything, I'm going to pass it on. And a lot of people try to make some things up. But I thank that. And I thank God for you. And I appreciate that, Pastor Vargas. Pastor Neil, can you give us your take on it? Amen. You know, it's been said gambling is a sure way of getting nothing for something. Okay. So, so you know, gambling yes. brings addictions. Sure. Uh, you know, you can be addicted to gambling. You know, you, you spend your bill money 
money to try to win enough money to get to pay other bill money, and then you end up having no money for any bills. So, but you know, and, and there's a difference, as it's already been stated. Investing is something different than gambling. Uh, you're investing in established businesses. Uh, the chances, if if you know what you're doing in investments, the chances of losing that money, uh, you might only break even. You might not make a gain, but the chance of losing that money is slim. Now, see, if I were to invest in the stock market, it would be gambling because I don't know anything <laughs> about it. But but for those who know what they're doing and those who, you know, I mean, there's people that invested in McDonald's back in the 60s are multimillionaires yes. today. So, you know, there's, there's um, investment in gambling is totally different. Uh, but as I said, if you don't know what you're doing, then it could be gambling. I love that. Back in the day when I was a younger man, I'm still a little young, amen, but my mother and my father told us we couldn't gamble because they gambled for Jesus's garments, and she, they, they associated that, and so I was afraid of gambling because I didn't want to have anything to do with, you know, that gambling process, but I absolutely understand what each of you have said, and it's awesome news for our viewer. We have another question coming from Delaware, Pastor Owens. The question is, why do believers today find baptism non-essential? That's a very good question. Very good. Um, well, I would say there's, there's two things uh, that come to mind for me. One is um, there is a lack of understanding, a uh -huh. uh, lack of understanding of the necessity of baptism oh. um, and why we do it. You don't get baptized to get saved. You get baptized because you are saved. That's it. That's right? it. Because you believe in Christ, uh, you are to show the world through this uh, public demonstration that you have died to the old man oh, yes. and that you are now new, you are alive uh, following uh, Christ. Right. And so you see like in Matthew 28, the Great Commission, uh, 28 verse 19 says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things that I have all commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always. So there's that lack of, um, one, there's, there's, they don't know. So we have to teach them, right, the importance of it. Uh, but then secondly, it is once you know, now is a question of obedience. Will you obey, right? If you love me, you will keep my commandments, Jesus says, right? So uh, that's the conversation I believe everyone needs to have uh, with a new convert. Um, once you, do you understand it? And if you do understand it, will you obey it? Mm. Thank you. Pastor Julia? I absolutely love that answer. Um, what I thought about is um, the submission that comes with baptism. Mm. Um, I, my mind went to um, Matthew um, 3, 13 through 17. I won't read it, um, but um, it was when Jesus presented himself um, to John the Baptist to be baptized. Um, baptism, um, there is a, a sub submersion but then there's an, emer an emergence mm -hmm. that takes place Very when you good. come up. And so there, that's a submission that takes yes, place. Yes. And a lot of people um, don't want to submit to the submersion, ah. if you will, um, because uh, 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 and, 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 I mean, and you think about the walk with Christ, there's a submission. <laughs> I always say s submitting, especially as a woman, yes, as yes, a wife, yes. is always an ugly and a dirty word that people don't want to talk about. Uh, we don't want to submit to anything. And so maybe that's why we, con I mean, I don't know why, but maybe that's why we consider it non-essential. It's because, you know, who wants to submit and be sub submerged um, into something? You know, I, I mean, we can only speculate why people do what they do, um, but we thank God for the submission in the submersion, um, and then what happens when you come up out, that newness of life. I get to not be who I was, but I get to walk into something new. I love that, the submission of immersion. I love it. We got to, I'm going to run with that one. Amen. All right, Pastor Redmond. Very good answers. Um, yes. I say, uh, I'm not sure. I can't tell you why people don't, Very good. Um, you know, I can't speak. I can't speak to that because I, I believe it wholeheartedly. Um, one reason I hear, though, is people say, "Well, the thief on the cross wasn't baptized." Mm -hmm. Well, he didn't have an opportunity to be baptized. But if you have the opportunity ah. to be baptized, you should be baptized. I look at uh, Acts right after uh, uh, Peter um, explained what took place when the Holy Spirit came in. 
Uh, he, in Acts 2, 37 and 8, they said, well, they are pricked in their hearts. They said, what should we do? He said, repent <laughs> and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, and for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So it's important, it's imperative, if we have the opportunity to be baptized, not because it saves us, but because we have been saved, and we want to be obedient. Even Jesus was baptized. You know, and so if Jesus was baptized and we can be baptized, we should be baptized. Pastor Redman, I got to disagree. That thief on the cross, I believe he was baptized. Come on now. He was on the cross and he died with Christ. He right went now. down. Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me. Y'all want to talk to me. All right now. <laughs> All right, but he came back because he said, this day. I only got 90 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Pastor Neil, come on. Hey, man, you know, First, first Peter. Oh, that mercy. Um, Three twenty and twenty one, it speaks about the uh, the Ark of Noah and how there were eight people that were saved by water, and it says in the twenty first verse, the figure whereunto even baptism doeth also now save us. Now that's not speaking about. Uh, saving our soul. It's speaking about the eight souls that were saved, their lives were saved. But listen to what it says, not by the putting, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the conscience, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So, so when we're baptized, we're, as it's already been stated, we're following the commandments of Christ. When Jesus said to go into the world and to baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. So when we're baptized, we give our life to Jesus Christ. We accept him. We're washed by the blood. We're baptized into the body of Christ. But that outward appearance that refers to uh, the death and burial of the, the old man and the resurrection of the new man brings us a clear conscience with God, knowing that we fulfilled his plan. Amen. I like that answer. Thank you, Pastor Neil. Our next question comes from Robert from Utah, and this question will be directed to Pastor Julia Farrell. Uh, if I have accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, but I am not living as a follower of Christ, will I go to hell? Um, so, Robert, that's a great question. There are a couple of scriptures that came to my mind. Um, first one was Second Peter 2, and I, I'm sure my colleagues will bring out um, plenty more scriptures for you. But Second Peter 2 and 4 states, where if God spared not the angels that sinned, mm -hmm but cast them down to hell and delivered them into the chains of darkness, so be reserved unto judgment. But I like the hope in this, because if you go on down to verse 9, it says, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust into the day of judgment to be punished. I, I also looked at um, Hebrews 10 and 39 that says, But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe yes. to the saving of the yes. soul. And so I want to encourage you that God can keep you, um, that you don't have to accept him and not live as a follower, um, that you can, that he keeps you, <laughs> that he can keep you yes, through that yes, process he, yes, of living. And that's the beautiful thing about this life. I think, and, and I'll pass it, but I think we get saved and we, we give our lives to Christ and we think that we're exempt from challenges that we think we're exempt from going through. We think we're exempt from certain things. But that's the beautiful thing about partnering with the Holy Spirit, partnering with Jesus, that he helps you through this and gets you all the way to the end so that you can live that life and get, get to heaven where you need to be with him. Amen. Pastor Redman? That's a very good answer. And, and this is also important to Ask yourself, did you really give your heart to Jesus? Because if you really Very gave good. your heart to Jesus, there will be a change. Jesus is not going to come in and just be idle. He's going to make some changes and make some noise, if you will, yes, yes. and make you better. When he uh, makes you, he said, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. It's not going to be no question about it. And so if you are asking this question, which is a, good, a great question, is, it, it makes you think you know, that you, you sh should surrender your life to God for real. Not just say a prayer, not just say, because salvation is a heart change. It's not something that's on the outside. It's from the inside and it comes out. It's not from the outside in. And so it's really important. I like James chapter one, uh, chapter two, verse 17. All right. It says, uh, in the same way, faith by itself, mm. if it's not a accompanied by action, it is dead. Mm. Faith by itself, not accompanied by action, it is just talk. It's just I illusion. It. I love it. So we don't want to just be talkers. We want to be not just hearers. James said this too. Ooh. Don't be just hearers of the word. Yes, sir. 
be a doer as well. And when Christ is the Lord of your life, you will begin to have desires to be a doer of the word. So this question suggests to me that you might have a desire, that you might feel convicted about where you are in life. And I would encourage you to surrender your life to God, surrender, submit, obey, get in the word, get in the church, and, 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 and be about your father's business. I think that that was an awesome uh, explanation. Pastor Neil, as we move forward to you, before you answer your question, would you say a word of prayer for all non-believers out Amen. there that really want to be connected to God? Amen. The scripture says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. And maybe somebody's dealing with some old things. Amen. They need to die off. Yes. Would you say Amen. a word of prayer for our believers today? Heavenly Father, we ask you, dear God, that you would forgive us, Lord. Lord, your word says that you must be our Lord before we're ever saved. And so, Lord, we ask you, dear God, to touch everyone that's watching. Oh, bless your name. Lord, touch their hearts, minister to them, draw them nigh to you. Lord, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of oh, yes. God. John wrote and said that, little children, I write unto you that you sin not, but if you sin, we have an advocate with Christ Hallelujah. Jesus. So, Lord, we come before you praying that you touch the hearts of those people that want to serve you, but they struggle. They struggle with difficulties. They struggle with sin. And I pray that you help them to conquer sin because your word says that sin no longer has dominion over us. We have victory, Lord. And we ask you, dear God, to minister to the hearts of those that they might come to know that victory and understand the ways of God in a fuller way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I think that God is moving in this studio, and I can feel the anointing here, and I know that it's permeating out in TV land. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. At this time, we want to thank our panel today for joining us and for giving such awesome answers uh, for the Word of God. Uh, thank you, partners, for joining us. We ask that you would call 1-800-232-9855. Mail us at P.O. Box 1010. Marion, Illinois, 62959. We ask that you would give online at tct.tv. We thank you for giving at TCT. Text to give at 56512. We'd like to thank our viewers for joining us each and every week, each and every day here at TCT at Ask the Pastor. We ask that you continue to send in those donations, praying for the Kuntz family, praying for those pastors that have given these great words out on today. I like that scripture that says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away and behold, all things are become new. Whatever you need God to do in your life, he specializes in new things. Don't worry about what the enemy tried to steal from you. God can make it brand new. There is no temptation that God has not already prepared a way of escape for. Ask him to come into your heart. Romans 10, 9 says, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. Thank you for joining us. God bless you. Ask the Pastor. Ask the Pastor is a TCT Network production and is made possible by your financial gifts. If you have questions or comments, write Ask the Pastor, P.O. Box 1010, Marion, Illinois 62959, or email us at ask at tct.tv. Thanks for watching.